feel your max with Brooks Running and the all-new Ghost Max 2. They're the shoes you deserve, designed to streamline your stride and help protect your body. Treat yourself to feel-good landings on an ultra-high stack of super-comfy nitrogen-infused cushion that takes the edge off every step, every day. The Brooks Ghost Max 2. You know, technically, they're a form of self-care. Brooks, let's run there. Head to brooksrunning.com to learn more. Next up on the Mutual Audio Network, fiction from our future. The following audio drama is rated R and is recommended restricted for anyone under the age of 17. You there, you're under 17, yes, yes, I can see you. Go somewhere else, we'll wait. Okay. You certainly took your time getting here, Phillips. You know, I was pretty busy with my own stuff there for a bit, Laughlin, so... Well, I'm sorry if our ongoing investigation is cutting into your personal time, Sir Phillips. What did you call me all the way up here for, Laughlin? We found the remains of the weather station crew. How long have they been here? Hard to tell. From the conditions of the bodies, though, I'd say at least a week. Did they walk up here? I mean, how'd they get so high above the city? No idea. you think they would have headed down from up here, but... I don't know. Maybe something chased them. Laughlin, why did you call me up here? When these people went missing, the only thing we had to go on was a recording left behind of your voice purportedly from the future. If you cost these people their lives, I thought you'd like to know personally. Whoa, hold it! I didn't cost anybody their lives! Really? Exactly how sure are you of that? Uh, It was your voice on the recording. Yours. Why you? Um, Why did they go missing? I, I don't... How did they die? Well... Why don't you have a look inside the tent and see for yourself? Is this a joke? If it is, it's awfully subtle. Laughlin, where are the bodies? These aren't bodies, these are just... clocks. I said they were remains. It's all that's left now. It's all any of us have at this point, so tell me, Sir Phillips, what will you do when yours is up? Who are you? You know, I'm not entirely sure. Why don't you ask me again when I'm a little more awake? Oh, 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 easy, easy, hand over, hand over. I've got you, I've got you. Here, here, there. Bad dreams again? I wish someone would tell these bastards to send me a telegram if they want my attention. The Account, A Tale of the Waking World, The Snows Are Eternal, Part 5. Ugh. Morning, Turvy. Morning. You know, when I said you were supposed to get a good night's sleep, that was an order, not a suggestion. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I ran into a little trouble in the rest department. Yeah, look, I know you've got an attractive partner and all, but that's really not an excuse. Nero wasn't the reason I'm like this. Mostly. Five hours earlier. Mm. Hanover? Mm. You really ought to get some sleep, you know. Mm. Mm. I need it. You need to be rested for your training. Mm. I couldn't agree more. Mm. Hanover, I'm serious. You have to start being more responsible. Uh, This is really important, and you have to start taking it seriously. What makes you think I'm not taking it seriously? Why are you still awake and being frisky? Because you handcuffed me to the bed, and you're sitting on me. Oh, that's right. 
Well, waste not, want not. <laughs> you know, back in my day, knights and squires had much more appropriate relationships. No, they didn't. Yeah, you're right. Anyway, like I said, that wasn't really the problem. The main thing is I'm having these really weird dreams lately. Well, given some of the stuff you've seen lately, I'm not surprised you're having nightmares. <sighs> it's more than that, Turvey. This is something specific about the angels. There's something waiting in the ice, like it's something trying to wake up. It's always the same type of dreams, trying to tell me something about what's going on here, and I can't quite decipher it. And it's got something to do with the angels, huh? Pretty much every time I have one. Hmm. The start just recently? No, it's been happening ever since the first day I got knighted, really. Oh, yeah. I remember reading some report you made about how you kept having dreams about that guy, what was his name, Terrazzo? Yeah, the angel's knight, although he called himself Luciano to me. Uh, interesting. Is that unusual? Well, I suppose it's not unheard of. I just don't like it. Why not? Well, if you're telling the truth, it means that you're tuned into the Celestials. Or they've let you tune in. I don't know which. If you're the enemy, why would they want that? More importantly, you're a human from Earth. The place where the Celestials have their strongest sway. I don't know if this is a blessing or a curse, but if I were you, I'd keep your guard up. So if they're aware of this connection and they're letting it happen, they might be lying to me. Well, their Celestials are undoubtedly lying. That's all they ever do. But... I'm more concerned about them leading you into a trap. Mm. Or worse. What's worse than leading me into a trap? Manipulating you into doing their bidding. Fantastic. Which brings us back to why we're here in the first place. So put your stuff aside, Sir Phillips. We're about to get you into shape. Let's see what you're made of. Just make sure there's enough pieces left to put me back together at the end of the day, okay? You just concentrate on your learnings. Let your squire worry about that. Huh. You do still have a squire, don't you? Until further notice, she's off running an investigation right now. Um, excuse me? Yes, can I help you, my dear? I'm looking for a Professor Clarice Samdi. That would be me. What can I do for you? Pleased to meet you. My name is Nero Guillaume. I'm a squire working for one of the company knights. I was told to talk to you. Nero Guillaume, did you say? Uh... Yes, that's correct. Oh, let me see. Oh, I see. Yes, you're a squire working for Sir Hanover Phillips. I believe we have one of his computers here waiting for you. Yes, that was one of the reasons I was sent here, was to pick that up. Yes, well, I have that right here. Hold on. Here you are. Oh, thank you very much. I take it you're familiar with this piece of equipment? Mm, yes, perhaps a little bit too much for my own taste. Well, inform Sir Phillips that we've done quite a few improvements to the operating system. There are more robust magical firewalls on it, and much less a chance of it being, shall we say, corrupted. I thought corruption was the least of its problems. Well, in our case, it seems to amount to the same thing. Either way, it's much safer to use now. That's good to know. But always remember, it's still effectively in beta, so please inform us if anything goes wrong. I'll make sure he sends status reports. Um, I couldn't help but notice when I told you my name, you seemed to recognize it. Hmm, perhaps I just saw it on the report? Hmm, that little bit of psychic shock you gave off and that feeling of distress I picked up from you seemed to suggest something more. Hmm, well, it's always so difficult to hide things from professional goblins, isn't it? That's why we make the big money. <laughs> so, is there anything you'd like to tell me? As a matter of fact, there is. But you said that picking up the laptop wasn't the only reason you would come here. So why don't you ask me your other questions, and I'll see if my information for you dovetails with it. Fair enough. What do you know about the Ave Nova Corporation? Mm. Metadyne's mysterious account. Mr. Rayburn has been sending memorandums around to us, trying to keep our eyes and ears open for any information we might glean. Have you found anything interesting? Oh, more than interesting. Quite distressing, really. Go on. Tell me, what do you know about Tycho Eastling? Well, I haven't read any in-depth biographies, but I know what just about everybody else here knows. That he was the architect who brought in the modern advances that made the city possible. Yes, that was about 97 years ago that that started off. The city was nothing more than a glorified fortress before that. Tycho Eastling was, by any definition of the word, an architectural genius. Earth's modern form of glass and steel. I mean, that's the standard now, but he was implementing things like that years before it was even seen there. He'd spent most of his life building astonishing structures all around the Midlands, but for his masterpiece, he came here. He wasn't commissioned, you know. He wanted to do it. No, he insisted. In fact, insisted might have been too mild a word. I think he was obsessed with making sure that his architectural ideas were implemented here. Has it to guess why? I can only assume by the way you're phrasing the question that he must have been drawn here for some reason. Tycho Eastling was a prophetic dreamer. It's where he got most of the inspiration for his most famous construction projects. When he was commissioned, he would often spend weeks, sometimes months, sleeping on the actual site where the building was to be erected, just so he could absorb the atmosphere and the energy from the area. 
His dreams would guide him as to how he would place the building and how it would be constructed and what the design would be. Not so with this city. He had begun designs on the construction of what would eventually become his namesake, his masterpiece, years before he even laid eyes on it. It was all recorded in his design dream journals, most of which are housed here at the city library. I take it you've seen the ones about the Skyway, then? <laughs> I've seen all of them, my dear. Everyone needs a pet artist of their own, one who they can draw inspiration from. And Tycho Eastling is mine. I'm a meta-scientist, not an architect, but you don't have to be a painter to appreciate Picasso now, do you? <laughs> Makes sense to me. <laughs> now, to answer your question, yes, I have seen the journals that he kept concerning the design and construction of Eastling, but I've seen more than that. This book is not available to the general public. This is one of his dream journals that he kept prior to the beginning process of the design of the city of Eastling. It's considered apocryphal, no historical significance since it's mostly personal notes. But it's full of interesting information, if you know what you're looking for. Now tell me, my dear, what do you make of that? It's the Ave Nova insignia. Yes, manifesting itself in a dream journal more than a century before the one you and I are familiar with ever appeared in public. The motif repeats itself throughout the book, and in no positive light whatsoever. Did Tycho Eastling ever give it a name? He refers to it only as the sigil. A sigil, as you know, is a symbol infused with magical power, designed to be a seal to represent an individual or an organization. They're used as corporate logos and family crests all the time, but this one... Eastling only ever refers to it in the definite article, and gives it a very sinister portent. Whatever this was that manifested itself in his dreams made him deeply afraid. You said this was a design book. Did he ever incorporate this sigil into any of his buildings or this city? Oh, not that I'm aware of. And given about the way he writes of it in his notes, I doubt he ever would have. He considered this to be far too dangerous to give a physical form to it. So what does the Ave Nova sigil have to do with the construction of Eastling, then? Tell me, my dear, how familiar are you with the concept of a hyper-sigil? It's a magically based artistic movement, isn't it? In a sense, yes. A sigil is an immediate visual representation of a specific individual or organization's magical powers. A hyper-sigil, by contrast, is not so easy to identify. It's the incorporation of magical concepts and energies into an artistic piece as a whole. A fire sigil is immediately representative of a fire. You would see it, you would know it immediately. A clan or an organizational sigil, such as a corporate logo, means that would represent that organization's power. With a hyper-sigil, however, the concept is woven completely through the fabric of an art object. In order to experience the effects, you would have to read a book or a poem or watch a movie, for example. The effects can be quite subtle, but potentially immensely powerful, and for the creator, unbelievably risky. To do this, you would have to invest an incredible amount of your personal energy into the project 24-7, and that can go very, very wrong before the end. So are you suggesting that Tycho Eastling incorporated a hyper-sigil into the designs of this city? I'm suggesting that the city of Eastling itself is a hyper-sigil. That seems a bit far-fetched. I mean, I could see pouring lots of creative energy into a sculpture or a painting or a series of books or something, but an entire city? He couldn't possibly generate that kind of energy by himself. I never said he did it by himself, did I? All right, so maybe he had help, but even then, why go to all that trouble? I understand this was his masterpiece, but what was he trying to accomplish? And for that matter, what does it have to do with Ave Nova? Because, my dear, I believe that Tycho Eastling built this city to keep something trapped inside. I think before you go any further, I should bring my partner in on this. He'll want to be brought up to speed. Most sensible, my dear. I have many more things to show you, and it could take a long time. And that will give me an opportunity to make a nice lunch for all of us. Thank you. I'll look forward to that. One last thing, though. You asked me earlier if perhaps I had recognized your name from somewhere. Yes. The truth is, I did. And before you go, I'd like to play you a recording. <sighs> Now you. Okay. Are we good? You expend too much effort when you do that. We're going to work on that next. Now I'm going to hit you with my white gavel. You try to block it. That didn't go so well yesterday. That's all right. I'll keep a soft touch. You just anticipate and try to block. Okay. White, white gavel! gavel. Oh. Felt that one, didn't you? Sure did. Now, you return the favor. Give me the strongest burst punch you got. No holding back? No holding back. Okay. Burst punch! <laughs> now, 
See the difference? Yeah, but you're gonna have to explain it to me. Okay, power down. Now, you see, that's what I was talking about. You spent so much energy firing yourself up. When you turn it off, you got nothing left. I don't know how to trigger it any other way. We'll get to that. I'll show you a few tricks. But first of all, let's talk about what we just did. Now, when you tried to block my attack, what did it feel like? <sighs> like trying to stop a battering ram made out of electricity. Uh, that's a pretty good description, yeah. It should be what it's supposed to feel like on the receiving end. But that's not how it's supposed to feel to me when I let it loose. Do you remember back at that rest stop business with that crazy trucker? Yeah? You unleashed your burst punch right into a wall to avoid hitting your squire by accident. Dislocated your elbow. Now that's not supposed to happen. When you were fighting that angel thing, Trent, back in Baylor, what did it feel like when you hit him with your hardest attack? I thought my arms were gonna break. Yeah, but they didn't, even though you probably hit him harder than you hit that wall. That's you getting stronger. When you were fighting Trent, he was slamming you through pieces of furniture. You were receiving injuries that would have left a normal person paralyzed or killed, but you just kept coming back with no broken bones. A guy once told me about the knight's armor, is that it? That's part of it. It is your power, but you haven't manifested it correctly because you haven't had the training for it. When you punched Terrazzo back in Baylor, when you punched me just now, what did it feel like? Weird. I mean, I felt my arm moving. I felt the energy build up happening, and then when I connected, there was nothing there. There was no energy. There was there was even no motion. It felt like I hadn't moved my arm at all. Even though you couldn't see the effects of the discharge all around you. That's the knight's armor. When that power is manifested correctly, you'll be able to withstand a lot more than what you were just barely surviving back in Baylor. More importantly, when I'm done training you, the most basic version of the armor will be passive. You won't have to conjure it at all. It'll just be there waiting for you whether you need it or not. I can see where having it like that would give me a bit of an edge. And waste less time, because in combat, time is survival. However, what I did to you was specific to Knight's powers. See, when you hit me yesterday for the first time, I gauged your attack, what type it was. I could feel the kind of energy it released, that sort of thing. So today, when you hit me, I simply anticipated it, intercepted it with my armor, and diffused it. So you made my attack harmless? Well, not completely harmless. Enough of it got through that I felt it, but I have enough training to deal with that kind of damage. I wonder if Terrazzo felt it, too. Trust me on this from one night to another. You always feel it. Hi, I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Oh, looks like I'm not. Actually, you are. What were you expecting? Oh, I don't know. I sort of imagined the two of you here, oiled up, covered in perspiration, stripped to the waist, or even more. The handsome young knight with his muscles rippling and bulging, straining under the stern, firm hand of his mentor. How much mental fanfiction do you write on a daily basis? Oh, reams. Anyway, since the two of you seem to have a second, I thought I'd drop by and deliver you some revitalizer drinks. I thought they might come in handy. Well, much obliged. You're entirely welcome. I'll be out of your hair in just a second. I need to deliver a message. First part is actually for you, Turvey. I'm having a little bit of a personal difficulty, and I just thought I'd let you it's know... It's all right, Miss Rayburn filled me in on the details of your family troubles without being too specific. Don't worry about me. My guard is always up. Good, and do me a favor. In the course of your training, make sure that he's in condition so that his is, too. It's a tall order. But I think I can manage. I trust you emphatically, Turvey. Now, as for you, when you're done here, hook up with me. I met a scientist named Dr. Samdi. She wants to give us a tour of some place called the Fossil Room. She says there's something there we need to see. Are they Nova related? Well, between the history lesson she gave me and a rather personal recording she played for me, I would say the answer is a definite yes. A recording? Mm hmm. Related to you specifically? Oh, yes. It's funny you should mention that, because Laughlin played a very interesting recording for me, too. I would say between that and the dream you told me about this morning, things are about to get most interesting around here. Let me guess. We arrived just in time for the end of the world again. Are you kidding? We booked ringside seats. You've been listening to The Account, A Tale of the Waking World, The Snows Are Eternal, Part 5. Written and performed by Kyan Chris Conroy as part of the Technical Difficulties podcast series. You can comment on this show at techdiff.com. Send me a mail at techdiff at gmail.com. Follow the discussion at techdiff.freeforums.org. Subscribe to the Twitter feed at twitter.com slash techdiff and look for Technical Difficulties on Facebook. Back again next time with The Snows Are Eternal, Part 6. And now, the moment you may or may not have been waiting for...
The CDs of Whoever Wishes are currently available. Which is to say that they will be available as soon as you start sending me money saying that you want to buy one. Here's exactly how it's going to work. You send me $6 via PayPal at techdiff at gmail.com. That's $4 for the CD, and the extra $2 will cover the supplies for printing up the CD, the mailer, and mailing it in the mail. And this is for United States residents only. If you'd like to order a CD and you're outside the United States, please contact me via Gmail first. That'll give me a chance to figure out what the international shipping costs for something like this might amount to. $6, by the way, is the minimum price. If you wanted to spend more on it, I certainly wouldn't stop you, but 6 bucks, I think, is pretty fair. Uh, when you send me the Gmail, send me that uh, CD purchase information in the Gmail, if you like. Like, that would be your address and uh, your name, and saying that you want to buy a CD from me, and, uh, well, that should come through on the PayPal if you're going to pay for it with PayPal. Uh, an address should show up. Anyway, make sure I get an address, and I'll ship the thing off to you. I'll be making up the CDs myself, I'll test them, and then I'm going to sign and number each one in order of which I receive the orders for, if that makes sense. So, if you get a low number, hey, you were first in line, weren't you? If this works out well, I may do CDs, uh, CD purchase things in the future, both original projects and stuff like, you know, older stuff that you might request. I don't know, I'll work this out. Let's see if it's if it's worth everybody's while by um, seeing if anybody buys the ding-dang thing. So, that's uh, $6.00. Uh, sent to me via PayPal at techdiff at gmail.com. And I would like to apologize to absolutely everybody who I owe mail because, uh, good God, it's been busy around here. July was nuts. Between creating the Whoever Wishes CD and then going to a convention and then my wife going immediately into surgery thereafter and me having to take care of her for uh, pretty much two weeks there and... Uh, then we had painters over because uh, we had some money set aside for some house maintenance stuff. We had painters over the house who were banging around and doing things and generally making it difficult for for me to record anything. And a heat wave that made it impossible for me to record anything because the booth was like a sauna. And then um, we had windows installed. We had windows installed yesterday, so that made it impossible for me to, uh, you know, do any recording. Good God, it's just been a tiring July. So hopefully August will be a hell of a lot better than this, and I hope to finish up the account very, very soon. And then I can move on to my next big project after a little bit of a break. And uh, I got all kinds of stuff. And people have been asking me, you know, well, I mentioned that I was going to do some other uh, Waking World-related stuff very soon. I need to sort of establish the Waking World as a an existing thing. And um, since people are really enjoying it, and that's what people most request around here is more Waking World and more account... That, uh, I don't know if it's going to become the, the, you know, the single emphasis of technical difficulties, but it's going to become a much more major part of it. So, the point I guess I'm trying to make is, if you've sent me mail and I haven't responded to it, I'm very sorry. I've just been buried under stuff, and I'm, I've already told you how bad I am at managing my time. So, I'll do my best to start answering mail every single day until I catch up with it. Anyway, that's that. i got a weekend to deal with here to rest up and also help my wife recover from her ongoing shoulder problems with the surgery and all that sort of thing. No problems with the surgery. She's recovering quite well. Thank you very much. But, um, you know, it's like that. Anyway, next week, hopefully I'll be back with another account. In fact, I'm anticipating being back with another account, and there'll be more news and more entertainment then. Bye! Oh, one last thing, just so you're not disappointed and to give you one more reason not to buy the Whoever Wishes CD. Uh, for the price of the CD, you get... A CD in a paper sleeve. I didn't really have the resources to make up a CD cover for it or anything like that, so this is a fairly low-budget enterprise, so hope you're not disappointed with that. Anyway, talk to you guys next week. See ya! Hey, do you like thrillers, action, adventure, mystery, crime drama... Well, you're in luck, because here on the Mutual Audio Network, we have Thursday Thrillers. You can subscribe and have a dose of adrenaline-pumping audio every Thursday from your favorite podcast player. Get it here now. The Mutual Audio Network. Listening and imagining together.